do you think there are any distinct opportunities or challenges offered by this field of international human rights research and advocacy in, in general for women lawyers? Do you think there's anything that is distinct about this field that you want to flag or highlight as, as a female lawyer? I think there's a lot which isn't distinct. And in that respect, um, comes as a surprise to many women and minority lawyers. And that is that institutions who work on human rights issues that are committed to addressing these issues may not themselves be either just or egalitarian spaces. And so the expectation is sometimes that you've come to work in a place committed to human rights. Therefore, it must also be one that embodies that in uh, the sets of policies and rules which apply at the workplace and many encounter and meet a workplace which isn't. Um, and so women spend their time and others. Um, you know, I think of myself in the inter-American system um, and others as persons of color. Um, and they spend their time not only working to advance human rights externally and on behalf of others in the region, but also pressing for policies which was certainly the case during my time at the Inter-American Commission, which are aimed at promoting equality and accountability within the spaces of work and the structure of many human rights institutions, international human rights institutions don't lend themselves to equality. You know, you have often a strong professional class and staff of persons who are working full time within the organization and sometimes another class, let's call it the commissioner class, the member class, persons who are members of treaty bodies, special rapporteurs, uh, commissioners, the experts uh, who are operating in a slightly different space um, within the same organizations. And this produces hierarchies, hierarchies which um, can sometimes um, lead to double standards or the absence of robust standards for everybody working in the organization. Um, and then it also produces elitism. And um, there's a real need to push back on that elitism, uh, I think, to promote the overall goals of um, human rights. So I think this, this idea that one has to also um, engender equality inside of human rights spaces is something that sometimes takes others by surprise. How do you think we should tackle these challenges? As you just outlined, a lot of it is not unique to this field, but a lot of it is also baked into, into the institutions within this field. I think not with silence. There is sometimes, I think, a temptation to say if we, if we don't speak about it aloud, um, if we don't address the questions in a public way, um, we can ultimately resolve them because the institution itself um, must maintain its strong image. Um, but I think openness, forthrightness, um, the addressing by many of us who hold privileges in some spaces, even if we face discrimination in others, is important. The responsibility of the expert group of us uh, to call for accountability and to be accountable ourselves um, are all important issues. I would say too that um, thinking about one aspect of a lack of diversity and inequality and not others is deeply disruptive and damaging, I think, to the organizations themselves. And I think, you know, for example, um, having spent four years in the inter-American system, I was very much struck by the absence of people of color. Um, I certainly noted uh, that the institutions had to work through machismo and environments in which women were not always respected or treated as equals. Um, the struggle around women's leadership. But I think equally striking for me was the absence of indigenous people, uh, people of color in a region um, strongly uh, populated by both communities. And I don't think you can have credibility um, in working on the issues of others while you haven't yet come to terms with them 
yourself. And I certainly think um, questions of racism and colonialism are larger big ones for international human rights law to still come to terms with. That's very insightful. Because we are seeing the lack of diversity and the structural issues within a lot of our institutions, are there any opportunities for us to try to change that that is you know, unique to the field of human rights? Because that's precisely the thematic topic that we are working on and that we are working with. Yes, and I saw the example of that with women in the Inter-American Commission um, who in the face of a crisis, uh, frankly, around allegations of sexual violence, um, within the institution rallied around the creation of policies uh, to address all of them in the context of work. And I think um, many of us see through the work we do either at the activist level or institutionally the value of working together. Um, and I certainly saw there the value of the community of women and men who said it was time for a change it was time to strengthen the institutional policies and um, have insisted that the credibility of the institution requires both inward looking and outward looking. And I think um, I'm talking about the inter-American system because it's where I spent the most time, but this is true right throughout international org organizations with human rights mechanisms. These are questions being asked everywhere. And I have seen opportunities um, particularly for professional um, lawyers working within these organizations to say it is time to end the dissonance between who we are to the outside and who we are internally. That's a very, very good example. Thank you so much for sharing that. Maybe on a personal level as, as a woman lawyer working in this field, are there any important role models for you um, personally navigating through all of this as you worked on the thematic topics and developed your career? Um, alternatively, are there any important lessons that you learned um, throughout the process, you know, from the people who are pushing for changes or from the women who were, who were there before you? Yes, you know, the interesting thing for me has been I mean, I've been well mentored and guided and cared for <laughs> by communities of women. And that's been foundational. But those women are my friends. Um, it, it has been, in some respects, some women who are older. Um, but I think for me, one of the foundational lessons of lifelong work is the lifelong partnerships you develop with others who are like-minded, um, who share your goals, who are supportive and who guide, and who will agree with you sometimes and sometimes not, but share a space which is one of hand-holding and support um, throughout. And that notion of family um, extends to some who are younger than you. Um, it extends in, multiple directions, but I found the community of similarly committed, um, willing to work together to be the most productive and trans transformative for me um, in providing the kind of mentorship which has allowed me to do the things I have managed to. Do you think the mentorship and the community is important for, for, for you know, other women and other marginalized groups in, in general? I think so. And I, you know, I always, the way, the way I think about it now is, you know, when you're doing this sort of work, look for decent, generous, committed persons who you want to work with, um, not who you want to work for. Chances are you will work for many people throughout your professional life. But many of us, regardless of who is our nominal boss, <laughs> have had a community of persons over decades. <laughs> who have walked together with us, not always in front, um, not behind, often together with you. Um, you connect at various moments, but I think of this work as lifelong partnerships, which you develop. 
uh, that you may not be in the same place, working on the same project, you may connect on other things. And I think that community is especially important um, for, for women and others um, who find themselves in places where they don't always belong, but have important work to do. That sounds like a community of people that um, we should all aspire to build and, and to surround ourselves with. It's, it's very good advice. And you choose that, you choose the community. In other words, it's not a community picked for you. It's one you pick for yourself and you slowly develop and acquire. Mm 